Let's get straight to the point and do not tell me that Rome wasn't built in a day because I am holding it right now in my hands. I am terribly sorry for this joke, but trust me when I say that this game is really quick, light and fun. But before I start explaining it, let me express my gratitude to Divi Jockey for this promotional copy. Thank you, Divi Jockey. Rome is a game set in the fictional world of Arsium. Of the same lore, you may find other well-known games, such as Above and Below or Near and Far. To set up the game, give each player three initial character cards and the exploration tokens of the same color. Shuffle the land deck and place it face up nearby, then draw six cards and set them in a 3x2 grid. The scroll of each land must be on the edge of the built map, like this. The players must choose a side of the map and align their three character cards on that edge. Give everybody a player aid. One of these cards will determine the first player. Then, proceeding clockwise, give one coin to the second and third player and two coins to the fourth player. Finally, shuffle the artifact tiles and place four of them face up in a row next to the map. On your turn, use one of your characters to place your tokens on the map. Put your explorer tokens in any point of the map with the same configuration and direction portrayed on the card you used. Then flip that card face down. The tokens must fit within the map, with the exception of the blank tokens, that I will explain in a second. Keep in mind that you must always place your tokens if possible, and you must skip a square on the map if it's already occupied. When you place a token on a square that contains one or more coin symbols, take that amount of coins. You may pay two coins to place a blank token if shown on a character you're using. You can repeat this action for each of the blank tokens shown on the card. Before passing, check if all the squares of any card on the map are occupied. When one card is full, the player with the most explore tokens on it claims that card. When a card is claimed, place it on the flipped side of the character next to the other cards and collect back your explore tokens. Then replace the free space in the map by drawing a new card from the deck. When there's a tie between two or more players, each tied player may bid coins to claim the card. Going clockwise, players may choose to pass or bid only once. Each bid must be greater than the previous. The player who bids the most claims the card and returns the coins to the supply. If another player claims a card and you have at least a token on that card, gain one coin. When a new turn begins, but all your characters are face down, turn them face up. Then take a turn as usual. You may pay some coins to reflip the character that you already used face up, even if you haven't exhausted all of them. This phase is called early rest, and it may be performed at the beginning of your turn. At the end of the turn, you may also purchase one artifact tile from the row by paying its coin cost and place it near you. Then refill the row with a new one from the pile. You may use their abilities on your turn and then turn them face down. When you flip all your characters face up, also flip any face down artifact face up. When a player reaches his 10th character card, all other players get another round. After that, everybody adds up the points of each own card and artifact. The player with the most points wins the game. If the biggest amount of coins can break a tie between two or more players, victory is shared. I know what you're thinking, Francesco, this seems much more than a filler. But believe me, in no more than 30 minutes you've learned it and played it. You may even add expansions or variations to the game without extending the time of play. In few words, if you like quick and colored majority games, Rome's definitely your destination. Oh, sorry, I meant your cup of tea. See you soon, dear meeplings.